Hi, thank you very much uh, for having me today. Um, really excited about that uh, that conference. Um, that's a shame I couldn't make it to London, but that's just for next time. So uh, my name is Antoine Amend. Uh, I'm the technical director for financial services at Databricks. And uh, really that means I joined as an industry practitioner. As an AI practitioner, my job has always been to be able to bridge the gap between business and technology. Because we can push technology for, for ages, but or we can push technology in the context of a business use case, in the context of business value, to drive innovation, to democratize those type of AI-driven insights to the lines of businesses. So my job as Databricks is to look after all those different use cases that we know in the data and AI in financial services. But if you're not um, uh, familiar with Databricks, Databricks is the data and AI platform. So using open source technologies on cloud, will provision the right infrastructure, the right tools, the right libraries for organization to unlock value from their data, all the way from simple SQL, BI, and MI dashboarding to more advanced type of analytics, AI, ML. And we do that by simplifying all the kind of data ecosystem that hinders innovation today. Organizations are struggling with data marks and databases and data lakes, are struggling with real-time access or batch, uh, batch ETL workflows, having a side desk activity for doing all the AI, having all the BI and MI reporting on the other side, and underpinning all those concepts are all different technologies, proprietary data formats, third-party vendors. All of that hinders innovation as creating those silos between all the different personas who will have different view of the truth. And to drive innovation, we need to be able to bring those different personas, a data engineer, a data scientist, a line of business, a risk manager, a business analyst onto one same platform. So with, with that simplification, we can start driving a lot of different use cases in the world of data and AI. So as I was saying in the introduction, my job is to go after all of those use cases, to understand those trends, those best practices, those reputable use cases that we see across financial services, across different sectors and industries, but also outside of industries. What retail are doing could be applied into the world of retail banking. What media company could be applied in the world of mobile banking, as an example. But if we start looking at all those different uh, production workloads, use cases, we can start bucketing those into those four or five main categories. Personalization, churn prevention, customer lifetime value, customer 360, all those type of use cases to go beyond just demographics and product and services to more behavioral analysis. Fraud detection is the best possible use of AI, but without the domain expertise, AI just stays absolutely meaningless. So how do we start combining domain expertise and AI into one same platform? Risk management, having asset managers slicing and dicing and visualizing and backtesting their entire model strategies uh, on, on decades of tick data, they need the cloud elasticity. They need that flexibility of cloud compute and that visualization aspect. And finally, what we see around alternative data in general or around ESG, environmental, social, and governance in particular, is the use of alternative data for, for is no mainstream being able to complement the information that we have, being able to drive competitive edge around what organizations are mentioning, uh, around different, different types of, of scenarios that could be derived from alternative data. Um, so moving from use cases, then we can walk backwards to technology. And again, not pushing technology first, but understanding the business use case, the context, and then walking backwards to what is the technology required in order to drive those type of business insights. So in the context of ESG, as I will be showing you in a bit, then we can show this is the typical type of data that you will need. This is the typical kind of reference architecture. This is how you will be training a baseline model. This is how you'll be training those type of insights. And this is how you will be uh, creating that materiality around those AI-driven insights. So bridging the gap between just AI on a notebook to commercial AI that can be used for decision making. So those are not products. Those are more uh, best practices, kickstart notebooks that shows you how to accelerate uh, that innovation in financial services across common themes, market risk, uh, ESG, 
tick data and time series processing, regulatory reporting, anti-money laundering, plenty of different use cases. So if we delve a little bit today on ESG and why we believe it's a data and AI challenge, there is, there is no standard, there is no monitoring, there is no automation in the way organizations measure, track, and communicate their ESG performance. And therefore, as an asset manager, it becomes difficult to start quantifying, comparing all those different organizations and relying solely on rating agencies that may not necessarily be correlated together. But the crux of the problem sits on the right. When we start looking at all those top 50 disclosed metrics in the world of environmental, social, and governance, only 10 are numbers, are metrics. The rest are policies, statements, intent. So how do we start quantifying it, objectively comparing organizations, and tracking those performance over time becomes a problem of unstructured data, a problem of AI, a problem that cannot just be solved by a simple BI reporting. So this solution that we created as just a framework that organization could tweak, change, tune, configure the way they see fit is just to show how Natural language processing techniques, AI-based techniques, could be used to programmatically extract insights from CSR reports, from annual reports or CSR PDF document, to learn that taxonomy, to create a standard using AI when there is no standard across all those different industries, but understanding those themes and the keywords associated to the themes. But once you learn that intelligence, that taxonomy, then the, the goal is to be able to apply that into the world of news, into the world of social media, into additional alternative data to get a more holistic and quantifiable approach to not just what companies say, but what companies do. And moving from having a yearly view of what companies say, having a real-time view of what companies do, the media reception, the reception from the communities that they uh, supported or invested in and bridging that gap between communication versus perceived, walking the talk. But that's just on the back end, that just AI being used. How do we make that actionable is that materiality that we mentioned, that delivering those insights to those lines of businesses who need to take the right decision. Whether we want to look at ESG in the context of risk management, being able to backtest all your different models and trading strategies according to those additional signals, or we want to look at this from a trading strategy, or we want to look at this from a reputation risk, or we want to look at this from different kind of angles, is that democratization, that last mile of delivering AI that matters. So without further ado, I will show you quickly what this specific solution accelerators is. So uh, through the form of notebook, and the code is all publicly available, you can download those notebooks, import those notebooks into a Databricks environment, on your cloud storage of choice, being on AWS, on Azure, on GCP, and start driving those insights quickly. We show you how to start with simple 20 PDF documents available online. So this is what Bank of America is saying, this is what Barclays is saying, this is what Citigroup is saying. All those different reports, uh, similar to this one from Barclays, is usually a 100 or 116 pages long PDF that shows all the great things that they're doing. But if you look at this, as I mentioned before, it's mostly text. So that first notebook will show you how to start programmatically extract all those sentences, learn all those different statements, and apply those techniques of, of natural language processing to start understanding those keywords and those themes associated to those ESG reports. So learning those themes in the context of ESG will obviously find Topics related to diversity and inclusion, will relate to green energy, will relate to code of conduct, will relate to risk management. And being able to contextualize those different topics can be used to create a simple exec summary. Instead of having to go through 120 pages long document, we can get a clear idea of what did HSBC do with respect to energy transition. What did Goldman Sachs commit, committed to in terms of supporting communities, but also provides organization a much more data-driven and objective view of comparing those 
corporate disclosures. How much Barclays over-communicates or under-communicates around the specific topics compared to their closest competitors. So that's one side of the picture. That's learning that taxonomy using AI. The second part of the picture is being able to link those into the world of news, social media. We show you how to start ingesting, curating, uh, uh, storing all those millions, hundreds of millions of news analytics for the last 18 months only to understand all those different insights that may come from news that we can now classify because we know what an ESG document looks like. We know what an ESG policy looks like. So being able to classify all those documents to get a real-time view of an organization mentioned in those news and being able to bridge that gap, working the talk how much of what Bank of America had the intent to do was actually actioned? What was the sentiment around this? And, and creating those kind of signals that could be used for, uh, for, for the lines of businesses. So this is code, right, again. But how do we start moving from code to actual dashboards, to actual metrics, to actual insights that people could use? So if tomorrow I want to do business with a specific organization, I want to invest in a specific uh, stock, I will get all those contextualized insights generated from data, from AI, onto one single app. Being able to be notified of every mention in the news around Ameriprise Financial in this example, that may positively or negatively affect their ESG strategy. The materiality it may have on their stock price. So being able to bring those insights back into those risk managers, asset managers, portfolio managers. The second aspect is now we, can, we have access to a PDF document, as I mentioned. I can go through that PDF document, reading that PDF document and trying to subjectively score. Or I could create a simple app that will call my AI model, that will uh, scrape all that content programmatically and directly through a simple application will tell me exactly that same report. This is how much Barclays over communicates around energy transition or under communicate around valuing employees compared to their closest competitors. So again, this is just one example of taking that last mile, assuming that we create the right data and AI foundation upfront, that we break those silos and we get all the different personas collaborating on driving those type of insights. So one of the many examples that we know of, one of the many type of use cases that we hear about, and one of the many different solution accelerators that we build uh, to help accelerate that innovation and bringing technology and business into one platform. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I uh, hope it was really insightful. If you have any further question, don't hesitate to drop me a note, drop me an email, and next time I'll do that live, I promise. Thank you.